Hello and welcome to News Analytica. I'm Afumia Ayalio and this is your news analysis for the day. Chinese imports and African manufacturing. In recent years, China has become the African continent's largest trading partner with trade totaling 254 billion US dollars in 2021. It is also the main country of origin for African manufacturing imports, providing 16% of Africa's total imports in 2018. According to an African Union study on international trade, the continent is also the largest market for Chinese goods. However, this influx of Chinese products has become a major concern for many African countries as it has implications for industrialization and economic development. There are serious implications for the continent's economic development because industrialization is widely seen as critical to improving living standards. The flood of cheaper Chinese products has the potential to set back Africa's nonsense manufacturing industries as domestic manufacturers that cannot compete will be forced to exit the market and will not create jobs. This is particularly concerning in countries like Ethiopia, where the impact of Chinese imports and employment can be devastating. Stay with us as we explore the impact of Chinese imports on the local manufacturing industry and employment. The rise in Chinese imports has come at a time when most African countries have very low industrialization levels. Manufacturing's share of GDP in Sub-Saharan Africa declined from 17% in 1995 to 10% in 2010 before recovering slightly to 12% in 2021. Participation in global value chains is another measure of industrial development and Africa's participation is still very low. Africa participates in global trade mostly by exporting natural resources and primary products. To provide context on the implications of the influx of Chinese products, let's take a look at the specific example of Ethiopia, which is heavily impacted by Chinese imports. China is the largest source of imports for Ethiopia, and Ethiopia imports more manufacturing commodities from China in terms of percentage of GDP than any other sub-Saharan African country. This has led to a significant increase in the percentage of GDP spent on Chinese imports from almost zero in 1996 to 15% in 2015. Under competitive pressure from imported goods, some Ethiopian firms usually lay off production workers to remain in the market. This is most pronounced in firms that rely heavily on labor-intensive production. Similarly, in Kenya, artisans have been losing market share to Chinese imports due to the high quality and lower prices of Chinese-made goods. This is not to say trade between Africa and China is entirely negative. Cheaper imports from China have the potential to generate jobs in wholesale and retail trade. Additionally, if imports from China are dominated by inputs such as capital goods or heavy industrial machines, this could potentially boost the manufacturing sector in Africa. However, it is important for African policymakers and leaders to be strategic in their interaction with China to get the deal possible. And African industrialization must not be sacrificed on the altar of cheap consumer goods from China or on a one-sided trade relationship. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area can be used to achieve Africa's industrialization, economic integration, and transformation. More importantly, it can address market fragmentation, the lack of industrial capacity, and the export of primary commodities to traditional markets of the North. The industrial policies of African states must ensure that Chinese manufacturing investment diffuses technology to local manufacturing firms. It is especially important for African leaders to prevent the use of Chinese investment as a conduit to flood the market with cheap Chinese manufacturing imports that undermine local manufacturing. This was our news analysis for the day and thank you very much for staying with us.